We've got 10 of the best at Albion Park on Saturday night. It's a good program as well. Plenty of depth right throughout the meeting. The free-for-all, which is race number three, is probably the most interesting race on that program. Action gets underway at 5.42. In this edition of Weekend Winners, we're going to catch up with our two leading drivers. Pete McMullen, who's the number one driver in the country right now, and snapping at his heels in second spot is Nathan Dawson. And as you would expect, they both have really good books of drives coming through on the weekend. Leading rainsman Pete McMullen jumps in the hot seat to go through his book of drives to Saturday night's 10 race program at Albion Park and he's online with us now. Pete, appreciate the time. No worries, Chris. You've got a really busy night coming through on the weekend. It starts with race one, number one, Nowhere Creek. This guy's been crying out for a draw. He finally gets it, but you've got Street Appeal out in gate seven. Can you hold the lead from gate one there on Saturday night? Um, we haven't really had, had him in a spot where I've, you know we need to use him early and um, I suppose Saturday night will be a night to sort of find out a few things and find out what he can do. His past four runs have been terrific. You must be thrilled with the way he's progressing. Yeah, his splits have been super. Um, you know, he's been off the track and getting held up and um, hitting the line you know, really, really strong. So um, hopefully with the improved gait, hopefully he can run a really good race. It does look like this race is going to generate pressure. They'll be rolling along here. Yeah, definitely. Um, look, you know, it's a strong race across the board. And, um, you know, but you know, we're really happy with him and we, we think he'll run a good race. So, um, fingers crossed we can just sort of, you know, from the, use that gate to full advantage. Okay, hopefully a good start for you there with Nowhere Creek. Race two, you'll be on a long shot here. Corey William, he's struggling for his best. You've got the three year old captain Crusader. Make my Memphis in a really good form. Wahakan Dream lands a good gate. Is this too tall an order for Corey William? Yeah, possibly. Um, you know, he did put in a really good run here. I think it was last week here at Redcliffe, and um, you know the horse is probably still racing pretty good. Things just don't go his way, and um, obviously when you're sort of finishing down a track, you know on a regular sort of basis, you're sort of they're not going to probably run their best races. But uh, you know if things happen to go his way, I think he could probably feature. But um, you know everything looks to be against him here. Okay, the design line open is a good race on Saturday night. And you've picked up the drive on our Uncle Sam. First time behind this uh, great old campaigner. He's won two of his last three. Can he win again on the weekend? Yeah, um, you know, obviously he's in good form and he's a super old horse. And, uh, you know, there's no quitting him. He uh, always gives his absolute all. So if, um, if we can give him a pretty good trip, I'm sure he'll be thereabouts. It's an interesting mix, this field. And given how the barrier draws have fallen... It's not clear cut. Mac Da Vinci's going to be well supported. Crunch time, but he's got to overcome a second row draw. Carl's from Heaven was brilliant last time out, and your guys in really good form. So there's a few sort of scenarios likely to play out here. Yeah, definitely. And um, you know, obviously there's a few sort of go forward horses, and there's a few there that'll be able to sort of, you know, if they go too hard, they'll be able to sort of really run home over the top of them. Horses like Carl's from Heaven. So um, it, it's a, it's going to be a tricky race, and. Um, it's going to be a really good race, not an overly big field, which will make it even more interesting. All right, race four, this race for the Mayors. Charming Charlotte last week, she had gate eight. She moves out one spot. She's got gate nine here on Saturday night. What did you make of the run last week? Probably wasn't her best run last week, but um, you know, at the same time, nothing really went her way. She was out the back and, um, you know, she was wide and different things. So um, prior to that, she'd been really good. Uh, she, you know, she, her runs have been really, really good all the way through there. So uh, with a little bit of luck, I think she can definitely feature. Um, you know, she just doesn't seem to be getting the right draws in these sort of races. Is this a better draw than last week though? Yeah, I think so. Although uh, last week after the start, there was a horse made a break and we were able to get off, but it didn't really work out much better anyway. Okay. Race number five, you're down to drive Will the Wizard. Uh, he was fresh up last week, just beaten narrowly in the uh, free for all against our Uncle Sam. You would have been thrilled with that effort. Yeah, we were super proud of him. Um, you know, he was raced. He got put in that race out of class there, and uh, to finish so close to, you know, a Grand Circuit performer, you know, to, you got to be pretty happy with that. Yeah. Now he drops back to his right grade here on Saturday night. He's got gate six. You've got Virgil on your outside, who's going for four in a row. Franco Hampton's going for three in a row. It's still going to be tough for him here on Saturday night. Yeah, definitely. It's um, you know, it's a strong race, and and the draw makes it really tricky. You know, like obviously he does race better. He's up close, but um, you know, there's a bit of speed inside and 
we've got to really sort of work out where we're going to be and it's going to be hard to map out and um, and sometimes you can be a little headstrong and you've got to just go with him a bit too so uh, it's going to be tricky but you know I do think class will sort of be a you know a big factor obviously he drops back in class and I think that'll be a, be a big help. Okay race number six you're down to drive Vinny Chase he's been going really well was he just a little flat last week? Yeah it probably wasn't quite as good last week um, did get a little aggressive there early last week and I raced a little bit. Um, fingers crossed he doesn't do that this week and we can sort of, you know, hopefully he travels just nice and hopefully he can finish off strong again. Where do you want to land soon after the start here, gate four? Yeah, it's a little bit tricky because um, probably haven't been sort of drawing that sort of, sort of scenario. So, um, you know, it, it makes sort of, a, a, you know, we're going to need a decision early whether we sort of slide across to get a spot or we tuck back in. Okay. Race number seven, you're down to drive Lombo Heaven. He just got picked off last week. Did you think he won last week? No, nah, I sort of knew I got beat right in the line. He was in front everywhere by the post. And, uh, you know, we were pretty happy with his performance. You know, they were all positive splits all the way through. And the winner had a really nice trip. And, um, you know, we, we were happy that, uh, you know, only got beat by the smallest bearable margin. You know, we, we sort of thought going to the race it could have been bigger. Yeah. Uh, now here with Gate 8, only horse off the second row. Neberg rings the horse you follow out. Is he a chance of holding up from the inside? I think so. Um, yeah, obviously he's sort of a horse that likes to sort of get out and roll along. So, um, you know, depending on what sort of pressure he gets, he possibly could be the leader, which would mean we should get a good run. Mm. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be far away either way, Lombo Heaven. He's going well. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously he had a bit of a an angle campaign there and he raced well down there and um, you know he would just went down there to get away from, from the carnival up here which you know probably would have missed out in the start of the was. Yeah. Uh, race number eight, double or nothing. This guy's close to a win. In fact he's banging down the door. Can Saturday night be his night? <laughs> well we've been saying it for a while. Uh, <laughs> he's racing you know absolutely amazing this horse but for some reason he can never sort of get past the post first so um, you know I don't think it's anything he's doing. He, he's sort of racing really good. He splits are good every week, and last week was a huge run. So fingers crossed this week can be the week. So we just expect the same from Double or Nothing this Saturday night? Yeah, look, to be honest, I, I think he probably even raced a bit better last week. He hadn't raced for about three weeks, so um, there's a chance he could even race better than last week. All right. Uh, you've got uh, nine drives, your final drive in the trot, and it looks to be a great chance as well, Doug. He was super good last week. <laughs> he was super good, Um it starts all, you know, all about crossing your fingers and hoping for the best. But uh, if he goes away, you know, he's going to be a really good chance. OK. Do you expect him to get away? Can he do it again? Uh, well, he was still a bit scratchy last week. We are just lucky that he, he um, was able to sort of not lose too much ground. So fingers crossed we can keep working on that and keep improving that. And uh, if we can sort of get on top of that, he's going to do a really good job. He stands on the outside of the front line on Saturday night. Last week, 2,600. He's standing at the 2,100 metre start point, so right in front of the crowd. Is that a good thing or a bad thing for him? Well, I think it depends, um, you know, what people think. Some people think he's looking in the crowd and, and getting distracted. But, uh, you know, I think it'll be a, be a help to him, you know, the 2,100 metre start that only has the rail there. And he can sort of stand there and, and be casual up against that fence and then just, um, you know, we can turn him and hopefully go away trotting. All right. Leader Peter, what is the drive you are most looking forward to on Saturday night? Um, it's a bit of a tricky question. I think there's a lot of good chances, but probably no standouts. But, uh, you know, I think Nowhere Creek's probably the one that stands out for knocking on the door. OK, race one, number one, Nowhere Creek. Peter, as always, really appreciate the time. We'll see you in action on the weekend. No worries, Chris. Thank you. Nathan Dawson also has a busy night in front of him on Saturday night. Ten race program at Albion Park and he's joined us to go through his drives. Nathan, appreciate the time. Nah, good to be on, Chris. Street appeal to race one. He's got gate seven. Can he lead? Yeah, I mean, most of the time when he draws the front, he can. So, can't see why he can't this week again. Were you disappointed on Tuesday when he was run over? Oh, not really. He probably had to work a little bit harder than I thought. Usually he can zip straight across, but he stuck on well. So, you know, it should be better from it. Blackhawk Joe was the horse that conquered you on Tuesday. Is he the obvious horse to beat again? I think so. Um, I know last time we backed him up, he raced really well. So I think he should be even better Saturday night. OK, well, that's street appeal in race number one. Race two, this looks a great drive on paper. This is a three-year-old that's doing an amazing job. He's been so consistent. Captain Crusader, placed in the Queensland Derby. Runaway wins at his past two. 
He's got gate seven, meeting the older rivals here. How do you sort of assess this race? Yeah, I mean, he's a nice horse and, you know, he's going to go places. So he keeps stepping up to the mark every time we ask, so I can't see why he won't do it again in this race. How does this race play out early? Where do you want to be? Are you likely to go forward? Do you just float off the arm or do you go straight back towards the tail? No, I think we just float off the arm, you know, see what happens underneath us. So we'll go forward eventually, but we won't come we're coming out too hard. Last week, uh, he, he put away a really good field. Uh, there was plenty of talent in that field. How did he feel at the line? Yeah, he's good. He's still strong at the line, and he had to burn hard early over the long trip. So he was doing better than anything else in the race, so, you know, he was good. All right. So you're a, a big fan of Captain Crusader. He's got some big targets just around the corner. We wish uh, Connections the best of luck with him. Race number three, his stable to mate crunch time. Speaking of consistent performers, this guy's right at the top of the list here. He's in a purple patch of form. Beaten at his past two, facing a second row draw here on Saturday night. Many are coming up with Mac Da Vinci. Can you get over the top of Mac Da Vinci? Yeah, I think I can. Um... It was a little bit disappointing last start. You know, we thought he might have stuck on and, and nearly won that race. But, you know, he's had a few hard runs and he's just been freshened up and we think he's back to his best again. OK. Mac Da Vinci, the fact that he's got that uh, front row draw, it's an obvious advantage. Do you think they're going to roll along in this race or they mightn't go as hard as what they have been in previous starts? Oh, no, I mean, they roll along. I'll probably get off the fence at the start and put him into the race. So we'll definitely be rolling along with in it. OK. One out, do you think Crunch Time's a better horse than Mac Da Vinci? I do. I think he's a better horse. I mean, Mac Da Vinci was good last week, but he still probably had his chance. So, I mean, if that was Crunch Time, you think he probably might have won that race. OK. Last week, you were aboard our Uncle Sam. You're, you're sticking solid with Crunch Time for obvious reasons, but just on our Uncle Sam, what sort of feel did he give you last week? Yeah, very good. Um, you know, I think he's coming back to his best. You know, he's got an Inner Dominion campaign coming up, so he's got to be near the best, but... You know, he probably didn't deserve to win that race with the way the race was run, but he ran a good last half and he was too good over the top of him. OK, well, that promises to be a good race. The Open there, race number three on Saturday night. Race four, you were down for both of uh, Colin Godden Mares and they're both in really good form. Miss Victoria's won a pass three, AJ Breezy Rose. Was it your decision? And if it was, was it a difficult decision to pick uh, one over the other? Yeah, it was my decision. Um, yeah, it wasn't the easiest decision, but... Um, I think Miss Victoria in there at Albion Park, she just lacks that bit of high speed. So in at Albion, a lot of horses can sit on you and still zip past you. So that's why I went with the other way. OK. AJ Breezy Rose in really good form. A winner two starts ago. Solid running second last time out. Is the, the trick in this race finding a pretty handy spot as quickly as possible? Yeah, I think so. You know, she's drawn in four and it's probably the best gait she's had for a while. So... Hopefully we can find a handy spot there and, you know, produce it when we need to. OK. Uh, race number five on Saturday night. You're on number five, Squire. Many are going to talk this race up with Will the Wizard, Virgil, and then to a lesser degree, Franco Hampton. Can Squire get across lead and then give you options thereafter? I actually think he's a really good chance. You know, he's been going well and his last start he was in the chair and over 21 and he wasn't far away, so... I think he'll take some catching on Saturday night. Yeah, just on that last run, it's a good point you raise. It was 2,138 metres. He's a better miler, isn't he? Yeah, 100%. You know, he's, he's not known for the longer trips and he stuck it out well against you know, quality horses. So he's got the speed to cross the ones inside, I reckon, and, you know, I'll be rolling on long and they'll have to try and catch me. OK. You saw uh, plenty of Will the Wizard last week because you run him down with our Uncle Sam. He's dropping in grade, so he does look well plays. Virgil shooting for four in a row. They're the obvious horses to beat, but like you said, if you're going to be in front rolling, it's not going to be easy. No, not at all. Like, you know, Will the Wizard was good. And, you know, he had cover, so if he happens to have to park up outside me in a 53-mile rate, you know, it's probably <coughs> survival of the fittest. Mm. Uh, race six, here's another good chance because this guy's absolutely flying. Our Bondi Beach for trainer Greg Franklin. He shoots for three in a row. Has he surprised you with that uh, resurgence in form lately? Uh, he's always been thereabouts, you know, without a lot of luck. So luck's finally going his way and he's, you know, doing the job. So I'm not overly surprised. He's just getting nice luck and nice trips. Yeah, he's had a bit of luck with Barry draws. But in saying that, though... He's attacking the line, where in the past he could be a little bit suspect at really savaging the line, but he's been strong in his past couple now. 
Yeah, I think that's probably fair to say. He's probably, you know, going a little better than what he was, but when they're in form, they st tend to stick in form. So hopefully, you know, the mile 21 doesn't worry him too much and he should be there again with a good draw. How do you rate this field compared to what he beat last week? Yeah, I think it's, you know, around about the same. You know, Sean Trey's in two there, so it's about the same field, but he's going well and I think he should be close. OK, well, that's a, uh, a good push there for our Bondi Beach. Race number seven on Saturday night. Neburgring, is he capable of leading all of the way? I think so. Um, his last start, he had no luck whatsoever, and the start before that, he was probably just short of a run. So uh, Steve's increased his work a bit, and we think we got him back on track again. So I think with a good draw, he should be in the money. All right. And in the last race, you've picked up the drive on Northern Muscle. He's a, uh, a very well-performed trotter. He's got a 20-metre handicap over the 2,138 metres. Not, not easy by any stretch, but at his best, he's right in the mix here. Yeah, I think so. You know, if he's close to the mark and he puts his best foot forward, it's not the strongest trot that's going around. So, you know, being off 20 is probably the only problem. But I think if he does everything right, he'll be in the money as well. You have driven him previously, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Um, I don't think I was far away on him. So, you know, if I do it again, hopefully we can go good. All right. Well, it's a big book of drives there for you on Saturday night, as we would expect. Uh, you're sitting second in the National Premiership. Pete McMullen has the nose in front. You're climbing the ladder. What's your best drive there on Saturday night? Uh, I think I've got a really good book overall. I should be in the money with most of them, but I'm going to go with Captain Crusader. Captain Crusader, race two, number seven. Nathan, appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. Good to be on. A big thanks to both Pete and Nathan for giving up their time and insights for their book of drives coming through on Saturday night. And I think that premiership race is going to go right down to the wire. Pete's got a pretty healthy lead, but it's going to be good viewing over the next couple of months. Looking for a best bet on Saturday night, the free-for-all is the main race. There's no doubt about it. I know Nathan gave us a good push with crunch time. There's plenty that want to tip Mac Da Vinci, and he's currently the favourite with Tab right now. Just to add further confusion to this race, terrific value with Cardles from heaven. Why can't he win again? He went off at big odds last time out when he was able to sail down the outside. He beat Colt 31. The small field's going to suit him. He's only got to find a spot. And this week, he's got the services of Grant Dixon. I think he's a terrific value play again in the free-for-all. So we're going with Cardles from heaven. If you are having a bet this weekend, please do so responsibly. We'll see a trackside at Albion Park. The first getting underway at 5.42. Thank <laughs> you.